Uganda has one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world today. 435 out of 100,000 mothers die due to childbirth-related complications, a slight decline from 505 deaths per 100,000 mothers experienced five years ago. If we look at the big picture of maternal health, that is the area of safe motherhood, broadly known, in Uganda, we know that we are dealing with a big burden of disease where we are losing about 6,000 women annually. And this translates to about 16 to 18 women dying on an annual, on a daily basis. So almost every hour in Uganda, we are losing one mother who is trying to give birth to yet another life. 80% of maternal deaths are caused by direct obstetric causes such as severe bleeding during and after delivery, infections after delivery, delayed abstracted labor, and high blood pressure during pregnancy. Research findings from a study conducted by a team from McCary University School of Public Health revealed that some of the factors contributing to the high maternal deaths could be addressed if mothers were delivering at health centers. In Uganda, out of 100 mothers, only 42 deliver at health facility, the rest delivering at home with the help of a traditional birth attendant. McCary University School of Public Health, with funding from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through a partnership with John Hopkins University and the United Kingdom Department for International Development through a partnership with the Future Health Systems Consortium and the Institute of Development Studies, Sussex, and district health systems is carrying out a study in Kamuli and Palisa districts to generate evidence-based findings with regard to maternal health that will lead to effective interventions that will help mothers deliver at health facilities. We were given a two-year uh, grant to be able to understand better or to demonstrate what it is Makere University as a training institution can do. Several things were undertaken under this grant. In this project we are trying to evaluate a new, uh, innovative yet locally uh, appropriate methods of helping mothers to deliver in health centers. The self-delivery study attempts to demonstrate that purposeful organization and coordination of existing resources and facilities can and could significantly lower or reduce the death of mothers. The project pilot phase commenced on December 2009 and it took three months the project was launched in June 2010 and implementation of project activities started immediately. to access transport more easily. So the voucher is given to a mother when she goes to attend antenatal care, um, antenatal care sessions in the health facility, and then she goes back with this voucher and she gives it to a transport provider when she needs to go to the facility for antenatal care or for delivery or postnatal care. And then the transport provider takes her free to the health facility so that she does not have to pay. And often they use locally available transport, which is often motorcycles. The project has been implemented for six months now, and it has registered tremendous successes. I'm going to talk specifically about the data of Casodo Health Center 3. And this is from June this year. Kasodo Health Center 3 in May had nine deliveries. 
In June, it had 10 deliveries. In July, it had 32 deliveries. In August, it had 47 deliveries. And in September, it had 44 deliveries. Looking at that, we see that there is an increase in deliveries. And all this I am attributing to the Safe Delivery Project. For 25-year-old Abo Rose, a nursery school teacher and a mother of a two-month-old son, the pregnancy period was a trying moment for her. I got hardship from my child, the time I just conceived up to reaching a certain point when I was around this six months. I got hardship, but the antenatal section helped me a lot. The voucher system enabled Rose to access transport to a health facility, where it was discovered that she had complications. Using her voucher, she was referred to Palisa Hospital. When I reached the Palisa, the midwife had to check me immediately. Then she told me, go and perform a serious exercise. My friends, I moved. I moved like a mad person. I would jump like if I was just in the field, PE. Rose is very sure that had it not been for the available transport, she would not have safely delivered at home. Her baby, who weighed five kilograms at birth. Really, the voucher system helped me a lot. It really helped me with my big stomach. I would not even move from... Even just a meter, I would not travel. And I would not even move a step because my moving from inside is only to go and bathe, then come back. According to this experience, I've, I've got an idea of not trusting anybody than the hospital. I should only trust the health centers. The health centers have really helped me to the way I've seen. I'm now carrying my baby. Tino Caroline a resident of Nyakoi, Kinomu village, Palisa district, is one of the first beneficiaries under the project. She comes from an area where most mothers used to deliver at home. But after being sensitized under the study, most of them now prefer delivering at the now accessible Kameke Health Center 3, that is four kilometers away. <laughs> She is now a proud mother of two bouncing five month old twins. 19 year old Barriera Vida Rose is using her voucher to bring her newborn baby for postnatal care at Nkondo Health Center today. Upon being checked, the nurse discovers that the six day year old child is okay, but only needs constant feeding. She sits on the Boda Boda and embarks on the three kilometer road home. She's very grateful for the support she's receiving under the study. Initially, when the transporters were brought on, uh, their role was mainly to do the transport system, to avail transportation services. But uh, as a community, they also realized the importance that actually they could play a bigger role. It wasn't all about working with the study to generate some kind of income. Now, actually, they became the messengers, or what would say, uh, the community mobilizers, because they would go in the villages, and then if they see a lady who needs to go for NATO, they would actually do the sensitization themselves and we found that to be very positive. Under the study, health facilities have been provided with delivery kits and other essential items. Kamuli and Palisa hospitals have been boosted with crucial supplies under the project, which has improved staff working conditions. Safe motherhood has been very beneficial to mat in the maternity ward. For example, we have been able to access most of the drugs which they've been providing us. We got delivery kits, which we didn't have before in the ward, whereby now we can leave our mothers safely. Then they've been also motivating us with some funds. We're able to, to buy necessary things like gum boots, protective gear. 
nurses now at least they have gumboots and we're doing well, we're happy. Just like recently, we had no sterilizer. They gave us some funds, I bought a gas cooker, gas cylinder, we were able to sterilize our equipment. Before the project, nurses were using charcoal stove to sterilize instruments at Kidere Health Center. But because of the project, they now use gas. I thank self delivery for the support it has given us because previously we've been using charcoal stoves to sterilize our instruments. But now we, go, we use the money we got from self delivery to buy this gas stove and the gas cylinders, we bought two of them. So far we've refilled twice using the same money of self delivery. This stove is good because it is quick. You just put on like I've done, go and do something, just time it. If it begins boiling like it has started boiling now, you leave it to boil for around 45 minutes. You come and switch off and the instruments are now ready. Also under the project, nurses got refresher trainings on the latest methods of saving the newborn and the mother, how to handle mothers and proper delivery equipment usage. They were telling us how a pregnant woman can go through her pregnancy in the, when is the heresy, when she's heresy, where you are to deliver, should deliver in the heresy facility where they are trained. Midwives, let me say, they should go for internet at least, minimal times, four times. They should go for safe delivery under trained people or under health workers, they should go back for postnatal visits and they should go for immunization plus family planning. The project has been providing some service fee to health workers for each mother they attend to. They have used this money to buy other much needed items to improve their working conditions and environment. Still under this project, we have got some funds and of which these funds have helped us to procure certain items that we need while we are serving these mothers. And some of them are lanterns, torches, pens. So they have helped us. Then the remaining part of the funds, we share it as a motivation. Feedback from expectant mothers show that service fee, coupled with better conditions of work, has led to improved attitude of health workers towards expectant mothers, which has led to improved relationships, ultimately resulting in better service delivery. It has been discovered that free transport for mothers during antenatal and delivery has ensured early detection of complications leading to timely and genuine referrals. 27-year-old Naigaga Ruth was referred from Bugaya Health Center to Kamuli Hospital. She reached on time because transport was available. Monitoring and evaluation of the project activities is carried out every month to ensure efficiency and quality service provision. We have done monitoring and evaluation through our support supervision team. We have a support supervision team that goes out every month to check out what's happening in the health units. We have a research team which goes uh, to the communities to interview mothers who have delivered and mothers who are attending uh, antenatal or postnatal to see what's happening. So these ones have given us some good feedback on how to improve on our services. There are some challenges that have been experienced as a project is implemented. One of the challenges has been related to understaffing. You find that some of the facilities have only one midwife or only two midwives, so they have to work the whole day and the whole night. So when the number of clients increase, for example, during the pilot phase, during antenatal care, they had more mothers than they could attend to. 
and even now during the implementation in facilities where they are very busy, you still find that the one or two staffs who are available in some units are not able to handle. Then the other problem has been related to having inadequate supplies of drugs and equipment that they need. Much as the project tried to intervene, we are not able to meet all the requirements that are there. At the end of the implementation, it is hoped that the study will come up with recommendations and lessons to be shared by the various stakeholders, including Ministry of Health, to ensure formulation of interventions from best practices of the study. I think the project has been a success just from the way it's been designed itself. Uh, the fact that you can do it in such a way uh, collaboratively means a lot and the initial results are all very po much more positive than we expected, very positive. We would like to believe that depending on the results, which we feel really are positive. There are two possibilities. The policy makers should be able to take them on and see what policy decisions they can make. Two, we believe the community should also be able to make a contribution so as to make sure that this intervention is sustainable.